Well, my name is Father Don Dahl. I'm a, a Jesuit from Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska, in, in middle America. It's squarely in the middle of the United States. It's a wonderful little university, and I've taught photography there for 45 years. I set up the graphic design lab and decided, started teaching page design and web design. And, uh, but my first love is the still images, of the still image in which you compress all of this and you layer a picture with information. And how to see the whole frame is a very difficult thing. It takes a long time to learn to see what the camera sees and to see how it sees light. And I love teaching that to my students. One of my favorite things to do is to make portraits of people with what I call Rembrandt lighting. And uh, I can show you some examples of that. But let me back up a minute. Uh, people often ask me, does being a priest have anything to do with your photography? And I say, oh my God, it has everything to do with my photography. One cannot help but photograph from who one is at the very depth of your soul. And being a priest for 47 years has deeply affected my vision of the world. Uh, I cannot help but look at people from that faith I've grown into over 47 years as a priest. So let me give you an example. When I do these calendars for the Native American children, uh, I s gather my team, it's only a couple people, and I will bring them on the place where I have set up a studio, and I'll say, have them say a prayer that I can look at these children with something of the vision, the empathy that God has for them, that they are a child of God, uh, that I can make pictures that reflect back to them how special they are in the eyes of God. And I think that helps me treat them with respect. Uh, and I think the children sense that, uh, that I have a profound respect for them. I also do that when I go out to make pictures of refugees. I pray in the morning that the people I meet, I can treat as they are a son and daughter of God. Um, one of my favorite things that came out of Vatican II is that the document Lumen Gentium, Light of the World, in which the church said, and it took the fathers, church fathers, what, four years to come up with this statement, that the Spirit of God is in all religions. Yes, in its fullness it's in Christianity, but it's still in all religions and in all people. I think we were taught as children that uh, we are temples of the Holy Spirit, and we get that fullness of that Holy Spirit in the Sacrament of Confirmation. But I firmly believe that God speaks in the heart of every man and woman on this earth. And how do you respect that in another person? If you remind yourself, or if I remind myself of that, that the Spirit of God speaks in this person at some level, it gives you a profound respect for the other person. And I think that enables me to look at them in a different way and photograph respectfully that this too is a child of God. So I think it helps me when I go out to photograph among refugees. In the last eight years, 10 years, I've been working more and more for Jesuit refugee service around the world. I usually go to one place in the, in the world where refugees are, and I photograph that for the JRS national team so that they can tell their story, how much they help people in 58 different countries where they work. The primary work for which I am known in the United States is my work with Native Americans. And I've done two books and two stories for National Geographic uh, with Natives in America. So this is my second book called Vision Quest, Men, Women, and Sacred Sites of the Sioux Nation. I went, I traveled for two years looking for the men and women had really made a difference in their own culture, uh, preserving their culture for their people. Here's how I worked. I would interview them for, what, two, three, four, five hours and then I would have that interview transcribed, and then I would edit it down with some fellow writers into what, what of significance did that person say. And then I would make a portrait the next day. 
The person who was my mentor on this was a very famous photographer, was uh, Brian Lanker, the late Brian Lanker. He did a book, uh, Portraits, what? Uh, I Dream a World, Portraits of 75 Black Women Who Changed America. Wonderful portraits. I love doing portraits. So he said, when you do this, interviewing is a different thought process than photographing. Do not make the picture on the same day. He said, when I did it, I had to go back a couple times and make a better portrait. So, but after a person has shared their life with you for two, three, four hours, there's a bond set up and I could go back the next day and I could view them and see what their characteristic gestures were and I could see what was in their environment and I could use elements of their environment that said something about them and compose a portrait. When I travel and give lectures on that, I do not like to talk about their culture. I always invited some of my old students who now had become medicine men, uh, very prominent in the culture, teaching their own language. So I invited them to go with me and they talked about the culture and I would just talk about photographing in another culture as a photographer. So that worked out very, very well. Lately, I've put together a book and this one, since all my books have vision in the title, this is a little presumptuous. This is the third in my vision series. It's my own vision as it really details my vocation within a vocation as a priest. So I call it A Call to Vision, and the title is a little presumptive, uh, A Jesuit's Perspective on the World. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyway, it's a nice book and uh, it's beautifully reproduced. I had one of the best presses in America, if anybody knows, the St. John Bible series by Donald Jackson. Uh, I had that press to the, the facsimiles of this book. I rejected 50 pictures on press and they redid them and they got it perfectly. So this details how I got started as a photographer, how I tried to be a National Geographic photographer in the beginning by going to Belize and making the type of pictures I thought a geographic photographer would. Uh, basically, I learned photography on the job. I got a job at Creighton University teaching photography I had, they had no business hiring me because I had no degrees in photography. So after a couple years, five years of teaching, I realized I could not keep my job. But I basically had learned photography by teaching. There's nothing like teaching to learn a subject, uh, to have to explain it to another person. So I said, I'm going to go back to the Native Americans. I'm going to do a book. I hadn't ever seen anything that I really thought was beautifully done on Native Americans. Uh, for the last hundred years. So I went back and, and did a book. It too went to over 30 cities in the United States. People in the U.S. are very interested in Native Americans and they feel guilty about what we as a nation did to them. So uh, that won me a national award and that's how I got my jobs now photographing for National Geographic. The editor asked me, what are you doing next? I said, well, I got a small grant. I'm going to Alaska. I'm going to live with the Eskimos. Uh, and he said, do you want a contract from us? He said, write me a letter. So I did. They sent me a contract. And the neat thing about it, I said, do I have to work at college? He said, no, it'd be a black and white story. And so it was the first black and white story in National Geographic for a couple decades. So every photographer in America, look, oh my God, who is this guy? who got the first essay in black and white for a very, very long time. Uh, so that was with the Yupik Eskimos in Alaska. Uh, they knew I was a priest. There had been a Belgian Jesuit who lived there for over 30 years. So yes, I had regular mass with the people every day. Uh, and they knew I was a priest, but they also knew I was there to make pictures of them and their culture. So I did a second story in Alaska for the geographic, the Athapaskans along the Yukon River. There too, I functioned as a priest and had Sunday masses in town, sometimes daily masses. So being a priest has been a big part of my life as a photographer and seeing people as children of God. There was a wonderful photographer in America named Minor White who did a book called Octave of Prayer he really outlined how uh, prayer is related to photography. 
He said, look at prayer is like contemplation and prayer as contemplation is an intensified awareness of God's presence and a photograph can be an intensified look at the world. So there's a profound relationship between seeing and praying. And I've always loved that. I had always wanted to do a conference on this with him while he was still alive. He has passed away some numbers of years, years ago. Uh, so that never happened, but it really affects the way I see the world. And prayer is part of my life, as is photography. <laughs>